ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Mazda, who invites you to discover the sheer joy of motion. And welcome back inside University Hall. This place is jumping right now. There's a whole lot of orange, isn't there, in this building? Oh, I tell you, it's great to see all these kids that are down low. They're excited. Yeah. Like I say, I don't know how many of them went to class last week after <laughs> seeing them stand outside waiting for those tickets. But, boy, we got a great ball game getting ready to unfold before the fans here. Number three, Maryland, and number five, Virginia. The Terps in red, the Cavs in white, and the first possession will go to the hometown team. I think you're going to see Maryland lay off of Jennifer Keith Jennifer just a little bit. Try to make him prove that he can hit that out shot. They don't want to let Watson get loose inside. He's so effective down low. Here's Roger Mason now playing the two-guard spot with Jennifer in the starting lineup. J.C. Mathis, no, but there's Watson with a big-time follow. Great drive by Mathis. Broke down the defender, went right to the basket. Watson, great follow-up out early on that back door. You know about Mason and Dixon. How about Watson and Baxter? Couple of 6'8", 255 big men. Tell you what, there's a lot of bodies yeah. there. They're going to be beating and banging and getting after Fisher's going to let him play. Byron Mouton a little strong with the three. Backs to the offensive rebound. Great hustle by Chris Williams as we set the starting lineups for you. The freshman point guard, Keith Jennifer for Virginia, making his seventh consecutive start. Adam Hall Hurt should play tonight, though. Maryland, all the familiar faces. If you haven't seen a lot of Chris Wilcox, He's going to stun you a couple times tonight, and there's one right there. Wow, Chris Wilcox, you got to get a body on him. His athletic ability is, is not parallel to anyone else in the ACC. It's through the roof, and that's where he can go. Byron Mouton with the steal, lays it in. Maryland takes the lead. The thing about Maryland, they're a big basketball team. They bring Holden in off the bench. They get bigger as they come in, but they do a great job in transition of pushing that basketball going to the front of the goal. Virginia, the toughest part of their schedule right now, coming off a Sunday loss to Duke. They're at Missouri next as they step out of conference. Here's Williams over Mouton. Made that one look easy. That was very easy shot, Chris Williams. I'm sure Gary Williams isn't happy with that. He got very deep on that shot. A little jump hook from about three feet. Here are the Cavs running at Blake. They're going to try to get the ball out of Steve Blake's hands, if at all possible tonight. Jennifer almost had a steal. One thing you want to do if you're in this Virginia ball club is you want to get out early and match baskets. How about Juan Dixon? 6'3", 160 pounds, soaking wet, the offensive rebound and the putback for Gary Williams, who last year took the Terps to the final four. Finally got him over the hump. If it weren't for Duke, maybe we'd be saying defending national champion Maryland Terrapins right now. And, of course, Pete Gillen has done such a fine job here at Virginia. Every year they take another step. And you get the feeling big things are on the horizon for this Virginia program. Well, this is a big ball game for Virginia. And the big question, are they really a number five ranked basketball team? And I think tonight they can answer those critics quite emphatically if they can win this ball game. Steve Blake picks up the foul. But Virginia of the two teams a little more banged up right now. Maryland is healthy. But for Virginia, Adam Hall with a bad foot expected to see his first action in a couple of weeks. Roger Mason Jr. nursing a sore shoulder and Travis Watson's just plain beat up right now, but the most serious injury is a hip pointer. He is feeling better now than he was about a week ago. I've got to get some shots early if I'm Virginia for Roger Mason. I want to get him into this ball game. I want him to be the guy who I'm going to go to at the end of the game, so he needs to take some shots early. Jennifer played under control against Duke on the weekend. Didn't turn it over in 33 minutes. Misses that shot. Now he's got to be careful. Boy, these two guys going at each other a long way from the basket, each picking up a foul. Well, this is just the first of two out of the ACC tonight. Nine Eastern over on ESPN. Number one Duke led by Jason Williams taking on North Carolina as rivalry week continues. Mike Patrick, Dick Vitale will have the call, and obviously as a, a Tar Heel, you've got some, I'm sure, some thoughts on that rally. My Heels are getting ready. They're going to be fired up tonight for the Dukies. It's going to be a heck of a ball game. A lot expected tonight. Ronnie Baxter just too strong as he lays it in. We're going to try to bring Jay Billis in a little bit later and uh, talk about that Duke-North Carolina rivalry from both sides. I might, to, I might have to challenge Jay to a foot race or something this evening. <laughs> you got to get that toe better first. i got to get my toe yeah. better first, <laughs> <laughs> An early lead for the Terrapins, 9-4. Now a steal in numbers for Virginia. Good defense. Virginia, uh, Maryland had the mismatch with back, Mason on Baxter. 
Boy, they were fortunate to get the follow there. Travis Watson in the right place at the right time. It's interesting. When this Maryland ball club comes into this building, it's almost as if they lose a little bit of their confidence, a little bit of their swagger, as opposed to when they're going to do for or going to Georgia Tech. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, they, they lose confidence in this building. Lost the ball now. Well, before the game, there was a PA announcer trying to fire up the crowd saying, let's make this the toughest building Maryland's ever seen. Look at Lonnie Baxter catch that ball down low. Nice pivot move. Great feet. Watson very active on that backboard. Baxter's on his back. Got to hustle down there, Lonnie. Get in front of him. Couple of big fellas in the middle. Nice pick out high by Watson. He's going to roll to the opposite. Blow, post up, block, and post up. Good block. Baxter, who leads the ACC in blocks, got a piece of that, and here come the Turks. Which is surprising. I wouldn't expect Lonnie Black Baxter to block a whole lot of yeah. shots. He's more of a ground-bound type, solid type player. There's Wilcox. Ooh, Look man. at that. Unbelievable athleticism for a guy that big. The scouting report has to be on the blackboard to say box out Chris Wilcox every time down. You cannot leave him and give him a chance, give him the freedom and space to create opportunities for himself. Just a sophomore averaging better than 11.7 rebounds per game. There's a board for Baxter. You give Wilcox a few more minutes, he'd be leading the ACC in blocks as Blake goes right down the gut and Pete Gillen he doesn't like to take his timeouts home with him, and he'll use an early one here now that Maryland has up the lead to seven. Maryland's just simply on the attack, and like I said, they will run at you with transition basketball. We watched this Maryland team play Duke earlier in probably the best 20 minutes of basketball in that first half I've seen in three or, three or four years, so we know what they're capable of. All five starters have already scored for Maryland here tonight, and Chris Wilcox has the two the most exciting buckets of the night. What's this shot? Mathis has to turn and go back and get to him, block out. Watson's not even in the play. Too much space. You know, it's funny, coming into the game, you got the feeling in talking with both coaching staffs that Maryland was worried about Virginia's ability to offensive rebound and come up with second chance points, something Virginia does very well. But so far, it's the Terps who have done the job on the offensive glass, thanks to Chris Wilcox. Virginia's a very active ball club. I think Gary Williams is trying to utilize that, though, to fire his club up. Not many teams going to out-rebound this Maryland basketball team. They get on the board offensively as well as defensively. Chris Williams with a tough pull-up draws the foul. Byron Mouton picks up the foul on Williams. A, a real quiet guy, Williams, but every year, 14, 15 points, six or seven rebounds, shoots the ball well. He, he doesn't dazzle you, but he fills up that stat sheet. Right, Dan, very talented player, does everything well, doesn't, doesn't dazzle you, but gets good baskets, makes his free throws, rebounds the ball, gets in the passing lanes, does the little things, and that you have to have to win ball games. Those numbers that he's got this year are very similar to the kinds of numbers he's put up over his entire career here in Virginia. Got the bounce, knocks it down, and sends us to a timeout. Maryland on the road in a hostile environment with an early five-point lead. Advantage of the points and rebounds, and you know he's going to get better. And I want you to look at these guys sitting on this bench down here. Look at these assistant coaches. Man, look at that. I want you to look at these suits. Look at these suits. <laughs> That's big time money right there in those suits. Those cats got it going on up in College Park, man. I'll tell you what. Dave Dickerson, Jimmy Patsos, and Matt Kavara. Go. We've got to give them the best dressed trio in the ACC as Mouton knocks it down. Look good, feel good, That's man. That's right. Seven point lead, Maryland. Mason handling the ball. Jennifer still on the floor. But Mason's a guy who's played point guard, played two guard, and was a teammate actually of Juan Dixon at the World University Games, had to play small forward. And you can see he can do some things as a point guard as he got that play started. And there's the offensive rebounding for Travis Watson in the game. I'll tell you, they did. Virginia just keeps, they're relentless on that backboard. Everyone goes to glass. They got five guys. Lonnie Ooh. Baxter slipped away from Watson and Mathis. Mathis lost his shoe on that play, and Blake with a beautiful find. Yeah, J.C. Mathis, Mathis slung a tire off. Oh, don't get sloppy with it. That's basketball. you got to pay attention. you got to be ready. you got kids like Blake and Dixon on this floor who are active, aggressive. They're always hawking that basketball. you got to take care. Every possession is so crucial. Don't get sloppy. 
Mason baseline challenges. Mathis, weak side rebound. Got it. Good job by Mathis. Get back, making up for the mistake of Bill handling that basketball on the other end. He's really option number five, but had a huge game against BMI last week, 20 and 15. And there's Juan Dixon. Inside, outside, he finds a way to score. Rivalry week continues, and this is a big one in the ACC. Number three, Maryland, at number five, Virginia. Dan Schulman and Brad Doherty with you. The Terps have played very well early, but you can see Virginia's coming on now with the offensive rebounds. That's really the only way they've scored today. Yeah, they get on the glass. I'm surprised they're able to rebound as well as they are against a big Maryland team that really gets after them in the backboard. Watson, no. Once again, there's yeah. a rebound by Matthews. And blocked, but a foul is called underneath. That's the sixth offensive rebound already for Virginia, which statistically is right at the top of the ACC rebounding leaderboard. Look at Steve Blake's eyes in this play. He's watching that basketball. He's ready. He's anticipating. And one thing in basketball that you want a kid to do is to react. His eyes were watching that basketball the entire time. You know, in talking to some of the Virginia coaches before the game, obviously you, you think about, you're worried about Dixon, you're worried about Baxter, you're worried about Wilcox. But they feel that Blake, he's the head of the snake. I yeah. mean, he's yeah. the guy who makes them go. And if you want to stop Maryland, you've got to find a way to get into Blake's head, get him in foul oh, yeah. trouble, get the ball away from him. you got to get it out of his hands. Yeah. He handles that basketball 85% of the time for this team. And he makes great decisions with the ball. He shoots the ball well. He does so many things well with that basketball in hand. It takes the pressure off of Mouton and Nicholas. And those guys, they just get to spot up and shoot. Steve Blake, and he's got another year and a half to play, but he's got a chance to be the NCAA's all-time assist leader. Think about that. Dixon left hand, follow no. Wilcox in there again. Here comes Mason, and he's got friends. Tough pass underneath, and Elton Brown, the freshman from Newport News, off the bench and into the game. Elton Brown went hard to the basket. He knew Wilcox and Holden were going to be flying at him. Used his body, got the shot off. Little contact. Here's Dixon curling off the screen again. That's his favorite play. Drew Nicholas into the game for Maryland as they go three guards, and he comes up with the offensive rebound. Taj Holden's limping a little bit. I think he may have twisted that ankle. He catches it on the low post. Let's see how effective he is. Well, a couple of big fellas in Holden and Brown, both about 265. Nicholas, no, off the fingertips of Holden out of bounds. Albert Brown did a good job. Look at Roger Mason Jr. Once again, we talk about him running the glue, being the glue for this basketball team. Oh, man, El Albert Brown got a lot of contact. Elton Brown got a lot of contact on that shot. Still knocked it down. Outstanding freshman class for Virginia. Jennifer Brown, Jermaine Harper's in the game. Jason Clark was outstanding in the first half against Duke on Sunday. Tough one for Mason. Virginia's got a very bright future. They're trying to mix four upperclassmen with four freshmen and turn themselves into national contenders this year. Well, I'm not displeased with the shot that Mason had last time down. Full off balance, but he was in the lane. Deep shot. You got to take it. Gary Williams makes another change as Mouton comes back in and Blake goes out. He won't stay out for long. But now Nicholas, who came to Maryland as with the reputation of being just a shooter, He's improved to the point where he can handle the point when Blake's on the bench. Handle the point. He does a good job defensively. Got long arms. Gets after those, those guards. They can't get the ball around him or over. Maryland's thrown it away a couple of times. Virginia's done a very good job handling it. Hanging on to the ball as Williams is fouled hard underneath the basket. That's an excellent pass. Mason makes a, does an excellent job making that pass. That's through traffic. See Roger Mason. Turn back into the middle. Ball's knocked loose. That's a heck of a pass between two defenders. Especially, again, considering he's not a natural point guard. He's yeah. used to being more of a go-to guy. But Majestic Maps, a guy they've had their sights on for a couple of years. But knee surgeries. So Mason's gotten used to playing the point. Now can also play off the ball. He can, he can do everything for the Cavs. He's a so well. They're getting back into it. Virginia has closed within four of Maryland here in Charlottesville. Now this same feeling is available in a car. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Introducing the all-new Mazda Protégé 5. Yeah, zoom, 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 zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Same feeling. Zoom, zoom. New form. Yeah, zoom, zoom, zoom. Hey, 
how to speak Australian. Devotion. Beer. Foster's Australian for beer. an exclusive two-carat diamond bracelet for $3.99. There is passion in here at Zales and Zales.com. Well, we've seen Virginia handle the ball very well, get on the offensive glass, and get back within four points of Maryland here, midway through the first half in Charlottesville. At that last time out, Gary Williams really working over the officials about Juan Dixon being held on those curls. He loves to come off those screens to get open. Take a look, Brad. Juan Dixon down low. He's on, he's on the post. He's going to curl around. Has he got a handful? Let's see if he's got a handful of jersey. I can't quite tell. Oh, I don't know if it's enough to keep him from getting to the basketball. That may be a little bit of a uh, little bit of working on the officials. I got a great stat, though. No out shot, outside shots have been made yet. All the points have been in the paint. Both ways? Both ways. Wow. Incredible. And you got some guys on both teams who can change that in a hurry. You oh, get yeah. some good outside shooters in this game. Good defense. Well, they've got the offense extended so far out now. It's eating time off the clock. Dixon just changes that stat with a 24-footer. Well, it's good to have talented guys. <laughs> they make up for a lot of ills. He's got eight. Dixon at number two in the ACC in scoring, and he could wind up Maryland's all-time score at the end of the season if he finishes strong. He could pass Lynn Bias. Wow. From the corner, the big guy, Elf Brown, can knock it down. I'll tell you what, Elf Brown, I saw him two weeks ago at Georgia Tech. He absolutely annihilated Georgia Tech inside, and he's got a lot of upside there. Inside, you're right, and outside, he's now 10 for 18 shooting the three this year. You got Taj Holden for Maryland and Elton Brown for Virginia. Big guys who can shoot it as well as anybody on the team. Nice touches. That's what you see more and more today is big kids who can shoot the basketball from the outside in rhythm. It makes them that much more effective. So after no outside shots, they trade threes. Trying to get the ball away from Nicholas now. Look at Dixon. Takes the bump. Tough turnaround as he air balls it though. And Brown with a rebound. Nice rebound by Brown. Keeping it up high. He booms out. Protecting the ball. Good job, big fella. He gives him some big minutes when Watson or Mathis has to go to the bench. Tough move by Brown right there. Nick. Calm down. Don't get too excited. Hold it. And you see the big guys, they these two respect each other because they, they know that both of them could shoot from outside. Uh -huh. and Brown had to get up on Holden. Uh -huh. Nowhere to go. And I, I tell you, I think Holden, like I say, his ankle, I think that ankle's bothering him. Seems to be favoring that right ankle, I believe it is. Underneath, Baxter draws the foul. But once he catches the ball down there, that's about the best you can hope for if you're the opposition. Well, he is. He is a bull. Lonnie Baxter catches that ball. He's so wide. Uses his space real well. Goes up. He's tough to guard that ball. Look at the numbers on Baxter. When Maryland recruited him, they thought he was a player. But even they admit they never thought he was going to be an All-American candidate, an All-ACC performer. Juan Dixon wasn't all that highly recruited. Uh, Gary Williams has had a nice habit the last few years of taking some underrated kids and turning them into terrific college basketball players. You're going to coach college basketball today. You've got to be able to do that. You've got to find kids who are going to develop in three or four years because now all the kids go pro. Yeah. You get a great player, he doesn't stay. And you see more and more programs trying to go back to maybe staying away a little bit from the one-and-done kids. Oh, by Baxter. And then the pass, Mouton didn't know it was coming. Got to see that basketball. Just, he just turned the wrong way. Innocent mistake. But once again, a possession. Brown, a little hook shot. No, sir, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get that out of here. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing about Baxter. He doesn't look like he could jump over a, you know, a piece of paper, but he's pretty agile. Yes, he is. 6'9", 6'8", 6'9", 260, 65, big youngin. Does a good job of getting on that glass, rebounding. Very Watson from 15. 
26-22 Maryland. Watson already with eight points and four rebounds. Off to a big start. Oh, I've really enjoyed watching Travis Watson play over the years. He is uh, such a competitor. He's been out of position. I've always wished Virginia could get that big center so he could play some power forward. But he's done an admirable job at center. Holden had that blocked. Mouton comes up with a loose ball. And finally into the hands of Roger Mason, Jr. Great ball fake. Well, which way is it going to go? It's going to go on Blake, and that'll be number two on the Maryland point guard. It's a big foul. Blake couldn't quite get there. Mason Jr. did the smart thing. He's in the middle of the floor. He flares out to his right. Watch him go. Watch this. Watch him go all the way over here to create that space, create the angle. Blake doesn't get there, and there's a good job of Mason going right to the basket because he saw he had the angle. Dixon getting set to check back in, presumably for Blake. As the best free throw shooter in the ACC knocks down the first. Dixon in, Blake out. Adam Hall coming in along with Jason Clark. Hall injured, getting his first action in six games. Flatter fasciitis, a gifted athlete and a very good perimeter defender. Jason Clark, the freshman, who had 11 points in 11 minutes against Duke on Sunday before fouling out. Interesting to see what kind of shape Adam Hall is in. He is an unbelievable athlete. And he's the guy, if he's healthy, that they think might be able to lock up Dixon a little bit, putting a bigger guy on him who's very athletic and Hall's on Dixon right now. Man-to-man -man defense, a lot of pressure, a lot of talking by Virginia, doing an excellent job of communicating on the defense. Good move. And Baxter strong inside, a little too strong with the shot. Parker rips it away, and again, Virginia's on the run. Good move, I'm telling you. Virginia's taking it right to him. Parker does a good job of ripping that ball out of Lonnie Baxter's hands. Going a full length of the court. He has the defender back pedaling. Keep going at him if he's not stopping. Now, how does Jermaine Hopper, Harper rip the ball out of Lonnie Baxter's hands? <laughs> Evidently, Lonnie didn't know he was there. But I guarantee you he would rip it out of there if he didn't know he was there. Hall's the guy who got the huge ovation when he came in. The senior averages about 10 points, 5 rebounds per game, but most of his value comes on the defensive end. Some of the offense runs through him, but you're talking about one of the best athletes, maybe the best athlete in the ACC. I agree. In any sport, I mean, this guy is an excellent athlete. Gets in the passing lanes extremely quick. And guard guys smaller than his. Gets a lot of pressure. Virginia already 9 for 10 from the free throw line tonight, and they've tied it up at 26. Well, it's kind of careless with the basketball, something I haven't seen from them this year. It's almost like they're trying to force the action a little bit. Good basketball teams, wait, let it come to them, execute, do their best in those terms. And again, Steve Blake on the bench with two fouls. Is Gary Williams going to leave him there for the rest of the half? That may depend on how well they play with Nicholas in there. Line drive jumper for Wilcox, rebound Harper. Probably not. Well, we know they're not as efficient with Steve Blake on the bench as far as the ball handling is concerned. Harper takes a bump. Oh, what a look at this in the cylinder so it's going to go to maryland but now you can understand why gary williams was so worried about virginia's offensive rebound and they're all on pogo sticks oh, out there they need to worry about boxing out i mean nobody's boxing the ball goes up everyone's standing there comes travis watson from out of nowhere where is who's putting a body on this guy and you can't gifted athletically you just can't stand there and think you're going to go up and rebound the ball you got to get out box a guy out you want the ball to come off and hit the floor. Big time offensive rebounding numbers for both teams tonight. Mouton with a sweet feed to Dixon and Hall commits the foul. Well, he just gave uh, Duke Etzel the death stare yeah. too after that foul call. <laughs> you want to box out and boxing out, you want to get a guy and keep him on your back. And the best rebounds are the ones that have gotten below the rim. When that ball falls, you want to almost hit the floor because you boxed out so well. Wilcox jump hook. Harper's done a good job for a little guy out of the glass tonight. Okay. Mason with a good look. That's what you want. You want him in rhythm, catching and shooting, not having to worry about running the club. Roger Mason Jr. with a three, averaging almost 18 points per game this year. And Virginia, which was down as much as eight early, now leads by three. Harper makes a great pass. He's taking away the pressure from having to handle the ball from Mason. And boy, he gets squared up, get those shoulders square. He's nothing but nylon. They got a good vibe going, Dan. I yeah. don't know. Yep. 
Talk about a rivalry between Mason and Dixon. Their friends got to know each other trying out for the World University Games team. They were roommates at the tryout camp in Colorado. Oh, Both of them played on that team. Dixon was the leading scorer. Lonnie Baxter was the second leading scorer, and Roger Mason was third. Oh, wow. <laughs> great experience. Yeah. Yes, there's a, there's a lot of bragging rights in this ball game. There's so many different ways, whether it's AAU, prep school, international ball, summer leagues. So many kids in this game have a connection with somebody on the other team. Yeah, yeah. Just enhancing the whole rivalry week theme. They're friends off the court, but they're going at it here tonight. That's exactly right. Good swing of the basketball, wide open Dixon in the corner. Excellent play. That's where he loves to shoot the three. Can't get it. Again, the ball's loose. Move time. Oh, wow. He just out hustled everybody on that play. Tough shot in the corner by Dixon. He goes wide open. Move time, boxing out. You love to see those guards get those rebounds. He is Mr. Energy for Maryland. A couple of years at Tulane before transferring to College Park. For three. Look at Travis Watson keep that ball alive. Oh boy, look at this range for Mason. Ooh, he's 35 feet out. <laughs> Little bit too far, but the Cavs are feeling good about themselves right now. They're on a 17 to 7 run. Get up on your feet like the kids in orange. We got another one coming your way. We'll preview Duke and Carolina when we come back after this. Paid the cable bill. I know. That was a mortgage. See you after work. Bye, honey. What? You'll find your new home at this year's manufactured home show. I wanted a sewing room. And I wanted room for an entertainment center. I wanted a gourmet kitchen. And at this show, on-site financing is available, along with land and home packages, custom options, and flexible floor plans. You can get started on home ownership today. We, we did. did. This year's manufactured home show at Tempe Diablo Stadium features 28 models on display with daily prize giveaways. Today's manufactured homes, designed for you, built for a lifetime. The object is to get it in the net. No, the object is to get it in this net. The Bud Light Quarter Bouncers Tournament. Enter at local retailers in select cities for the chance to win a trip to the national finals hosted by ESPN's Trey Wingo. And catch Big Monday on ESPN. Now see, I'm a great coach. Coming up the second game tonight, number one Duke taking on North Carolina at Chapel Hill. That game at 9 Eastern over on ESPN. When you think rivalry week, you think Duke and Carolina, regardless of the rankings or the records, it's still Duke and Carolina. And, and what a treat this is for me. I've got a Carolina guy, Brad Doherty, sitting beside me. I've got a Dukey and Jay Billis back in the studio. Jay, what do you think of this rivalry? What does it mean to you? Hey, guys, how you doing? Good. How you doing, Jay? I'm doing great. What does this rivalry mean to you, Duke and Carolina? Well, I think it's one of the most intense rivalries I've ever been a part of, or intense games, and that includes having played in the Final Four. That any time that Duke played North Carolina, you knew that you were going to take a shot from a great player, and if you weren't ready, you were going to get absolutely drilled. And uh, I know that firsthand after getting drilled by Brad several times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, I'm excited about tonight, and. Uh... I think that my, my young heels are going to get better tonight. They're going to get a valuable experience. I'm a little bit concerned, though, with all of the, the superstars coming in from Duke. So I've got to add some of this. I'm going to challenge Jay to a foot race in front on Franklin Street at 850. <laughs> I don't know what else I can do? I'm ready for that. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny that the two slowest guys from the rivalry in the 80s are challenging each other oh, to foot races. Well, let, let me ask you something, Brad. And looking yeah. at this game, I think that Jason Capel is going to be the most important player because he's got to calm his teammates down to handle all that pressure and take a big load upon himself. What do you think? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Jay. Jason's going to have to play a really, really good ball game. He's going to have to be smart. You know, he's a ball handler, and he's one of the few ball handlers that Carolina has. 
that can handle the ball, go to the front of the goal, that type of thing. But with all the pressure that Duke applies, especially in the backcourt, it's going to be awful tough to get the ball up the court. And uh, he's going to have to play a heck of a ball game. If he struggles, it could be very, very ugly. Has your cell phone been ringing with Matt asking you if you have any eligibility left? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he doesn't want me out there. Only for playing half court. That's the only way I can participate. Hey, Jay, thanks very much. Uh, we'll get back to you. We'll look forward to hearing from you at halftime. Duke and Carolina coming up. 9 Eastern time over on ESPN. Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale. And, uh, you know, I, we talked about a little bit earlier on ESPN Classic today. Uh, obviously, previewing this matchup was a 1984 game between Duke with Jay Billis on that team and North Carolina with Brad Doherty on that team. And I've talked with Jay about that game in the past, and he said, you know, how did we even take them to overtime? They had Perkins, they had Jordan, they had two Doherty's, they had Kenny Smith on that yeah, team, too. Yeah. I mean, so I guess you never know in this rivalry. Well, let's not discount who they had. I mean, they had Jay and Mark Allery and Johnny Dawkins and Tommy Amaker. Tommy yeah, Amaker, you're right, yeah players as well. Jay uh, loves that underdog. Right? Oh yeah, they were a heck, of a heck of a group of ball players as we all came to know and uh, let's not discount that. And plus, uh, Matt hit a heck of a shot to send the basketball game into overtime. So uh, they could have easily won that game. What a game we're having here tonight. Maryland at one point led by as many as nine. They were very hot early, but then Virginia got out in transition, got some layups, got on the offensive glass. And Pete Gillen's gone very deep into his bench. He's used about 10 players already, and everyone has played well for the Cavs. Very impressive uh, stretch by UVA. They've done a good job of taking care of the ball and rebounding the basketball against a bigger Maryland basketball team. And things changed as well when Steve Blake picked up his second foul. He has not played much since then. Math is too strong. Mouton the rebound. He made a nice move. J.C. Math has got a great pump fake. Sent the defender flying. A little strong on his shot. Where to finish that shot? Nicholas having to run the offense with Blake on the bench. Dixon can't get the shot off. Finds Wilcox. Nice move. Oh, that's a Beautiful. good touch. He's got that shooter's touch, man. That ball just sat on the iron and died up there. Chris Wilcox with six, averaging better than 11 for the last couple of weeks, averaging closer to 15. So talented is this young man. He's going to be a superstar. They try for the give and go. Stolen by Mouton. Dixon with a loose ball. Oh, nice find for Mouton underneath. Everything but the finish is he'll shoot a couple. Well, I'll tell you, this, this league is full of guys who are in that 6'8 range. Look at these two guys right here. There's two of them, Watson and Baxter, both 6'8", about 260 pounds. Watson's got good post-up position. Baxter has good defensive position. Got him off the block. These guys just, they, they neutralize one another. At the line of Mouton. And I think about Carlos Boozer at Duke and Darius Sungaila at Wake Forest. And you don't have seven footers, but you've got six, eight, six, nine guys on every team with a ton of strength. And now yeah. you see the next generation as Elton Brown comes in for Virginia. That's right. Big guys, yeah. with, you know, likes a lot of strength. You've got good touches, run the floor, very versatile players. You don't have those big lanky goofy seven footers like me you can only do one or two things <laughs> had to come in out you know had to call in out of the rain you got these guys that can move yeah well for lanky and goofy you did all right <laughs> <laughs> jennifer boy they're running at him but he has played under control again williams for three and the rebound to baxter i like that shot he's wide open nobody's guarding him. Uh, wilcox can't get there nobody's going to get there maryland sloppy with the ball well, again they, they continue to throw uh passes and make plays that are I just think out of character for this ball club. They're too good a ball team to be that lackadaisical with the basketball. They use their very precise, very intense and focused. It's almost like they're they're going through the motions at times, just expecting things to happen because they're talented. And you get the feeling, especially with Blake out, Gary Williams is just trying to get to the half, close in the lead, somewhere near where he is now because of the foul trouble for Blake. Williams no, and there's Dixon in there again. You know, 160 pounds, and he'll get his 5-6 rebounds tonight as well. V. Mouton, and now Dixon having to do a little bit of everything for the Turks. Well, he is doing a good job. I called Mouton a big guard earlier. He's actually small forward. He does a good job of rebounding the ball. That's just good recognition. That's having good chemistry when a guy can push the ball up the court in traffic, throw a pass, thread a needle through two guys, and you catch basketball. But a lot of those passes have been errant earlier. So. Yeah. Mouton, a big scorer at Tulane. Led Tulane in scoring each of his two years there. More of a complimentary player here with the likes of Dixon, Dixon rather, and Baxter. But an important player. Very important yeah. guy. Does a lot of things well. 
Brings a lot of confidence and leadership to this ball club. 8 0 run now for Maryland. Good pass. Spread the defense out. Oh, man, he goes right by him. They sit off the glass and he got it. That's too easy. Too easy. Mason with seven and Brad, he's playing with two fouls. Chris Williams with two fouls. Elton Brown with two fouls. And that was the biggest problem for Virginia against Duke on Sunday. They were tied with the Blue Devils at the half, but then their foul problems caught up to them in the second half. Yeah, that, that is trouble for them right now. We got to make sure Roger Mason doesn't get that third foul. Nicholas drives. But you got to be aggressive. Want to go against Maryland. Taj Holden. Picks up the foul and slams the ball into the upright under the basket. First on him. Not a good foul. You want to you want to play hard, play aggressive. You want to play smart. You want to take. You don't want to stop that clock. Give them a chance to score, shooting free throws. Which is something that Chris Williams has been doing on several occasions already here tonight. He's missed a couple of jumpers open early. I think he's going to get hot. It'd be a big contributor in this ball game because he's getting a lot of open looks. Virginia has been an outstanding free throw shooting team the last several weeks. Basically, once they got into ACC play, and that's holding form again tonight. Both teams are doing a great job of the line tonight. We'll step aside. Blake's going to come back in after the break. Everything we hope for and more. It is tied here between Maryland and Virginia. You should read this. One of the U.S. bobsledders pulled a muscle. Looks like they'll need a sub. I must go. Any excuse is a good excuse to get to McDonald's for the all-new chicken breast parmesan sandwich. Juicy all-white meat chicken smothered with tangy marinara sauce topped with melting mozzarella. Getting hungry? Hurry in. So where's the metal? The irresistible new chicken breast parmesan sandwich. Now on McDonald's new taste menu. McDonald's, a worldwide Olympic partner. Where is it written that only a sports car can behave like a sports car? Not here. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Yes, yeah, zoom, 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 zoom. Powerful two-liter Mazda Protégé. Why should sports cars have all the fun? We moved into a new house where Mom got this great new job. I heard her talking to Dad about doing the right thing with her retirement money. Something about rollover, which gave me this great idea. Come on, baby. Come on. Roll over. Roll over. I'm just going to turn your body this way. I hope her rollover was easier. It must be. No load mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. <laughs> Welcome to beautiful Aspen, Colorado, home of the Winter X Game 6. Hello, I'm Sal Mastercala, your host of the game, where the big question is, can Sean Palmer return to his winning form in Snowboarder X? You gotta watch and find out. Winter X6 debuts Friday on ESPN and ESPN2. Now back to the game. Hey, we got a guy. Looks like the, the orange version <laughs> of X Games, huh? There you go. The X Games coming in strong here next week. Now, never mind the foot race between you and Billis. I want to see you guys on a snowboard. That'd be ugly, and I'm scared. <laughs> These X Games coming along. My son's grade point average will drop at least two grades <laughs> starting Friday. It starts tomorrow, ESPN and ESPN2. Tonight, rivalry week continues. We've got Duke and Carolina coming up, 9 Eastern over on ESPN, and what a good one we've got going here in Charlotte. Yeah, we do. We've got a great ball game going here. I, I had expected Maryland to come in and really take it to them with their size and power. Virginia showed a lot of gumption. Offensive rebounds being tough. Boy, I tell you, you can't let Lonnie Baxter catch that ball right there. He can score at will on post-ups from eight, nine feet from the basket. And is it a coincidence that the best offensive set they have in a while is after Steve Blake comes back into the game? Mason gets by Mouton looking for the foul, missed the three. Well, Blake's got to be really careful. He's going to take a little bit of the pressure off the ball handling duties here. He's got to be real quick. Dixon with a ball fake. Gets by Williams. Misses the shot. Is that Mouton in yes, there? Sir. Boy, he's giving him some good minutes tonight. 
Oh, what a rebound. What a rebound by Mouton. Coming up at the half, college hoops tonight on the Jackson Hewitt Halftime Report. Reese Davis and Jay Billis will talk about a Big Ten rivalry. Purdue and Indiana going at it over on ESPN. A preview of the other game of the ACC tonight. Number one, Duke against North Carolina. And then Jay with his all-ACC team. It can be hard to, how do you pick five guys out of this league? Give, give me your five. My five guys. Whew, boy, that would be tough. I would have to take, uh, I like Steve Blake. I love him. I'd have him as point guard. I would have uh, Jason Williams. I'd let him play two guards. All right, you're going to move him around. Okay. I would take Dunleavy as a three. Uh, boy, I'd tell you, it's it tough after that. Give me Lonnie Baxter in the middle as my, as my five man. And I'll tell you what, I would take Chris Wilcox, believe it or not, wow. as my four man. Wow. I, I would take him as my four man. And then I have Jason Capel as my sixth man. I can hear the Carlos Boozer fan saying, what's that oh, North no, no, Carolina no, 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 no. guy? Can I change? I got I to switch that. Hold on. Hold on. I'll take Carlos Boozer. You can only put five on the floor at one time. <laughs> can I Let me change that up now. I got I to switch. Can I have two teams? <laughs> we'll, we'll see if Jay can narrow it down a little more. Now, now Jay's been preparing. We threw this at yeah, you. So that I'm sorry, really Carlos. Fair. You'd be my man. I, he'd, he'd be the man in the middle. Here comes Blake back in. I split time between here and Lonnie. That's, what I mean. That's fair. That's fair. Both those guys are excellent. Blake back in. Looks like Gary Williams trying to get him in on offense and get him out on defense. To try and save him. Wow. Well, we talked about Virginia going deep into their bench. You know, all those freshmen, even though they lost to Duke Sunday, all those freshmen played well. Yeah. Some good things are going to come out of that game for Virginia. Yes, you're right. You're exactly right. And now it's Maryland crashing the glass. And it's a tie-up, says Duke So The arrow keeps it with the Turks. There's an unhappy man. Travis Watson was on the glass. Coach Gillen thought he was over the back. Here's what happened to Virginia Sunday night. At Cameron, they shot well. The fouls were the problem. The game was 42-42 at the half. Mouton getting inside again. You know, he's got 14. He's the high score in the game. He just has a nose for basketball, which is which we call savvy. He's just in the right place at the right time to pass. Brown. The big guy took a step back to make sure it was a three. Big fella caught the ball, looked down at his feet, got him together, took his time. Looked like Larry Bird shooting that jumper from the corner. Elton Brown, the freshman, has 10, including a couple of trays here tonight. Man, he looked good on that. Took his time, patient. Go ahead, big fella. Hey, man, at you. What a first half. 42-41. Dixon bobbles and a tie-up. We'll turn it over to Virginia. Oh, that's great hustle, Roger Mason. Man, the big fella Elton Brown catching the basketball. Look at this pass. Mason goes to the middle, nowhere to go. Nice pass. Big fella catch it. Look at him look down. <laughs> oh, nice soft hand. Nothing but nylon, big guy. What a stroke. It. There's the pass. Oh, look at that catch. Look at that follow through. Oh, ho, ho. He wanted in one. Look at him looking at the official. Hey, what a nice touch. <laughs> Boy, this freshman class for Virginia. Mason explodes to the hoop. Man, what a move. I'm telling you. They're showing us something, Dan. They're showing us. Nine for Roger Mason, Jr. Virginia back on top. Baxter draws a crowd, too strong. Look at Jennifer. Under control, poise. Long pass to Mason, long three. Woo! Man, these guys have some confidence on offense. I mean, they're just taking it to Maryland right now. No back, no quit. They're not going backwards at all, offensively or defensively. Maryland's trying to get one shot if they can out of this. Got about a five-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Here's the guy you want with the ball. I think I try to get it to Byron Mouton. He's the one that's had the hot hand. Boy, look at Jennifer. He's so quick. I hope nobody blows the so you won't hear it. Oh, man. Boy, that was close. That was close. Jennifer's hustling everywhere. And I tell you, that was close. Let's see if we can now. Uh, Nicholas turns the corner. Here comes Mouton. Woo! Right in the middle of the jersey. I believe they missed that one, Dan. I believe they missed it. I believe it was a charge. By 
Marvin Mouton continues to pile up the points. Ryan Randall comes in for Lonnie Baxter just to keep Baxter from picking up a cheap foul in the last 11 seconds of the half. What a half for Mouton. He's been the man for Maryland. He has kept him in this ball game. Rebounding the ball, scoring the ball. He's played play great. 16 points. Whoa, look at this move oh, by Mason. No, don't do it to him. Oh, boy. <laughs> That would have been the capper on a great half for Roger Mason Jr. Great numbers for him. What a move he just made. Missed the three, but he was one of the big reasons, Brad, that they got back into the game. Three is explosive. Right by him. Just unbelievable step. He did it from inside. He did it from outside. Virginia coming back. A two-point lead to the break. Jackson Hewitt halftime report. Reese Davis, Jay Billis. Fellas? good 20 minutes of work fellas very entertaining 46 44 at the break and you know you can bet on just about anything at the Super Bowl if you and Doherty have that foot race I want to lay down odds on whose hamstring explodes <laughs> That's first right. It'll probably be mine. <laughs> we'll talk about that Duke North Carolina game coming up on the Jackson Hewitt halftime report also another intrastate battle in the Big Ten where the Hoosiers continue to have that shooting eye against Purdue they're not great on defense we'll talk about it in a bit ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. These are quarter carrots and these are half. They're beautiful. What kind of cut is that? This is a round cut. If you look hard, I'm sure you can see them. They're fantastic. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. These are eight carrots, and these are ten carrots. Make it a Bud Light. Hi, Leah. Okay, what's the latest? Flat screens. Huh? You heard me. Flat screens. They're the latest rage. Flat screens, huh? Yep, they don't take up a lot of desk space, and they look cool. Everybody should have one. Well, then, let's give people a 500 SE with a Pentium 4 processor and a flat screen for just $9.99. Great. Hey, a little soda over here? All right, boys, last card. I'm gonna raise you a dollar. <laughs> you must have something, boys. It's just a buck. Hey, don't you know about 1010-220? What? Yeah, man, 1010-220. All calls up to 20 minutes, 99 cents. And seven cents a minute after that. All calls up to 20 minutes, 99 cents? See, a buck is worth a lot. <sighs> I'm out. Me too. I call you. Do you have any fives? Go fish. <laughs> Dial 1010-220. Guys, when I say happy, you say birthday happy. Birthday! Birthday party! Third one this week. Dave and his friends are the biggest scammers on campus. Oh, my brain! I broke my tibia! On February 1st... I'm a commercial airline pilot. Is he a pilot, too? FBI. Cool! I got the ugly one. Learn from the masters. This is on resume under activities, smoking with the homies, and busting caps and whitey. Slackers, rated R, opens everywhere tomorrow. Moo. Everybody's talking about Gateway's stylish flat panel monitors. And now you can get one for yourself when you call 1-800-GATEWAY and ask about the Gateway 500SE. This computer has everything you need, including an Intel Pentium 4 processor, a CD burner, and a flat panel, all for just $9.99. So call 1-800-GATEWAY today and add a little style to your workspace. That's 1-800-GATEWAY. Want to play better golf? Learn from the game's top pros and teachers when you subscribe to Golf Magazine. Call now to get more distance. Straighten your slice, sharpen your short game, perfect your putt, and more. No matter what your level, you'll enjoy the game more because you'll play better with Golf Magazine for today's kind of golfer. You'll get full coverage of the pro game, great new courses you can play on, exclusive deals, and more. Call now to save 67% and get this Golf Magazine gear bag free with paid subscription. Call now. This halftime report is presented by Jackson Hewitt. Come into any one of Jackson Hewitt's 3,300 locations today and get more in return. 
Virginia digging in late in the half. They got the upper hand, 46-44. The Cavaliers on top of the Terps at the break. Glad to have you with us on the Jackson Hewitt Halftime Report. Well, Saturday, Indiana absolutely lit up Illinois. 17 triples, everybody throwing it in from behind the arc. And you would think that this was an absolute recipe for disaster for Purdue. The second worst three-point defensive team in the Big Ten. The worst scoring defense in the Big Ten. Those two getting together at Assembly Hall and... The Hoosiers doing it with defense with Jeffrey Newton, Jay. The Hoosiers are long inside with Jeffrey Newton, Jared Jeffries. They can really block shots and bother shots. Nice job by Newton to run the court. And Jared Jeffries, an outstanding passer. He's made a huge difference. Purdue shot only 27% in this first half. Indiana, 61%. The Hoosiers, a team playing with a tremendous amount of confidence right now. Mike Davis's team will, in all likelihood, join Ohio State at 7-1, assuming they can hold on to that 19-point lead. Rivalry week continues tonight. 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. It'll be Duke and North Carolina. And a lot of the talk leading up to this game, Jay, is how big is the blowout going to be? Carolina's obviously struggling. But you go back since Mike Krzyzewski went to Duke. And all the meetings since, and nearly 60% of them have been double-digit deficits by the end of the game. So blowouts aren't really unusual in this series. Do you expect to see another one tonight? Well, I don't know about a blowout. It just depends on how much. I mean, Duke's the better team. I don't think there's much question about that. But in this rivalry, we've seen the lesser team rise up and win and play well many times. It'll be difficult in this ball game simply because Duke is so explosive. And they're explosive at the point guard spot with Jason Williams, who can put the ball on the floor, go around that high screen. He's really been attacking the basket. Averages 22 points per game. He shoots a very good percentage from three. And Carlos Boozer has been magnificent, especially in his last six games. He's had six straight 20-point games. He's averaging 23 points over that period. Duke's pressure is going to be a real issue in this game. The Blue Devils force 19 turnovers per game, score 30% of their points off of those turnovers. For North Carolina, I think the real key guy is Jason Capel. He doesn't get near the credit he deserves as being an outstanding player, one of the most versatile players in the ACC. He is going to have to really help his team handle that pressure. Guys like Adam Boone and Mel Melvin Scott, who both played fantastic basketball against Clemson and had great games. They scored 44 points in that game, only turning the ball over one time. They're going to face an awful lot more pressure because you know that Chris Duhon, Jason Williams, Daniel Ewing, to some extent Mike Dunleavy, are going to try to press out and really force them to pick that ball up and force them further out on the floor to, to try to get them to turn the ball over. When they've played teams like for, uh, uh, Wake Forest, they've turned it over, and that's been a problem. So North Carolina going to have to be very careful with the ball. It's just not, it's just not the guards. The big guys have to make mm. themselves available, come back and get it, and then attack. You know, in college hoops tonight, last night, you drew an analogy to the 1995 game when Duke was really struggling, and a capel rose up and kept the Blue Devils in it for a while. We'll see if his younger brother Jason can do the same for the Tar Heels. That game starting at 9 o'clock Eastern time over on ESPN. Of course, we've got a pretty good ACC match. we got the ACC game of the night going right here, and no Jay's going to talk about the all-ACC team, and I'm going to give away one. i, I got to say Dixon makes it. National yeah. Defensive Player of the Year, he's on it. We're back after this. Tell me something good. When you come to Jackson Hewitt for your taxes, you'll get a super fast refund. In fact, our typical refund is over $400 more than the average IRS refund. Call Jackson Hewitt now, 1-800-234-1040. for everyone. Call Domino's for a free order of oven fresh cinnamon sticks when you buy any large one topping pizza for $9.99. Sprinkled with cinnamon sugar and served with creamy icing, they're tough to resist. So call now, because at Domino's, we've got the dinner thing covered. Get the door. It's Domino's. At BASF, we don't make the car. We make it more reflective. We don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. If the price of bottled water has forced you to take drastic measures, try Pure Filtered Water. It's just as good as bottled at a price that's ten times less. Pure Water Filters. Your water should be pure. Besides saving you money, the Pure Water Filter is so easy to install and use, you already have all the tools you need. 
pure water filters, your water should be pure. Tell me something good. When you come to Jackson Hewitt for your taxes, you'll get a super fast refund. In fact, our typical refund is over $400 more than the average IRS refund. Call Jackson Hewitt now, 1-800-234-1040. These people are making a New Year's resolution to enjoy life. They all called Hair Club. If you feel good about yourself, you'll be able to accomplish anything you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the best phone call I ever made. I'm very happy that I called Hair Club. And to sum it all up, there is a cure for baldness. It's called Hair Club. Make your resolution. Call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB today. Friday at Winter at 6. Some athletes train their whole lives for an event that happens only once every four years. Other athletes can't wait that long. See three-time champ Sean Palmer make a run for redemption. Then, Winter X5 gold medalist and USA Olympian Danny Cass and 15-year-old Sean White get tricky, immense super bite. That's Friday at Winter X 6. 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific on ESPN and 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN2. Virginia, only one win this season over a team in the RPI Top 50. Certainly Maryland will qualify in that category, and the Cavs have a two-point lead at the break. You know, we're seeing some of the brightest stars in the ACC in this game, Juan Dixon and Roger Mason Jr., just to name a couple of them. And I'm sure there are some no-brainers when you start thinking about your all-ACC team, but some of the choice is a little bit difficult. They are difficult, and that's why we're doing this, just to show how hard it is to pick the first team all-ACC, only five guys. And we're doing it based on performance, and we're midway through the ACC season, so obviously things can change. But you have to put Jason Williams on it, averaging 23 points per game over his last 13. He's been incredibly consistent and very explosive, especially in big games. He's just taken over toward the end of games. Juan Dixon, who I think is the most complete player in the ACC because of his ability to score and then also defend on the other end. Averages almost four steals per game. Already among the top three all-time in the ACC in steals. Then Mike Dunleavy, Jason Williams' own locker room has players just about as good as he is right now. Dunleavy, the most versatile player in the league, can step out. He's an outstanding rebounder in the top five or six in almost every offensive category in ACC play. Carlos Boozer has been magnificent over his last six or seven games, but he's been consistent throughout the entire season. He's scoring and playing off his teammates very well. The fifth spot, perhaps the hardest. Josh Howard is getting the nod thus far in ACC play because he's been so versatile and absolutely magnificent. He's been scoring, rebounding, getting steals. He's out defending. Here are the guys that could have made the first team, but we just had to leave off. You only had five spots. Roger Mason Jr., who we're seeing in this ball game right here, a versatile player, a big-time scorer. Darius Sungaila, Anthony Grundy, two terrific players. Grundy, one of the better defenders in the league. Jason Capel, who's coming off a concussion, who doesn't get the credit he deserves. Travis Watson, the best rebounder in the ACC. And Lonnie Baxter, a guy who could have easily been first team, but was simply left off in favor of Carlos Boozer. Every year, it's always difficult to pick first team all ACC. I think this year could be one of the toughest years in recent memory. You start putting together an all-freshman team, and several of those Cavaliers might be on That's it, too. Right. Pretty good freshman class that Pete Gillen's got down in Charlottesville. We've got a second half of action coming up near UVA and Maryland, a two-point game, and Roger Mason, Jr. We can't call Dunleavy, Jr., but Roger's okay with this. The two-point game is great. On the next Just Shoot Me, who are you? He's an efficiency expert who runs a tight ship. You don't have chops. You're all fired. What? You can't do that. I got on fire? Tonight at 8 on 3TV. Next, everybody loves Raymond. Coming! Oh, what do you want? What are you doing? I said come in. I said coming! On the next, everybody loves Raymond. Tonight at 8.30 on 3TV. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Here we go again. <laughs> Check it out! I know, Phil. Your phone bill's really low. Every single month. Look! Look close! Switch to Cox and save over 20% a month. Thousands of people have made the choice. Call 623-594-1122. Tell me something good! When you come to Jackson Hewitt for your taxes, 
you'll get a super fast ball game right here look at this the bench scoring look at that can you believe that nothing from those guys that's incredible that they don't get any points from their bench and when did you think you see a half a basketball when steve blake would only have one assist that's right in foul trouble for a while played only 11 minutes byron mouton with 16 for maryland high score in the game williams off the wilcox miss and here come the Cavs. wilcox is wide open Got to, got to finish that shot. Focus. Oh, what an effort by Baxter. Don't want to get out hustle. That's great hustle by Baxter. Nice look ahead by Blake. Bounce pass. Mouton into Wilcox. He can get his shot anytime he wants. Oh, he just jumps over the people. He just jumps over everyone. I mean, he's so athletic, he catches the ball on the block. He's got great moves, good hands. Got to finish those shots, though. That pass thrown to him earlier, he can catch that basketball dunk. We talked at the beginning of the game. Everybody knows how good Maryland is. Is Virginia deserving of a number five ranking from the first 20 minutes? What do you think so far about this Virginia Absolutely. Team? The way they played in the first 20 minutes of this basketball game, the way Roger Mason turns that corner and drains that jumper, I think they definitely are a top 10 basketball team. Third three for Mason, 15 points on the night. He's the high scorer for Virginia. And by the way, Mason hit the 1,000-point mark tonight as Wilcox. They're going to tie up, and the ball is going to go back over to Virginia. By the way, I'm adding Mason to my all ACC team. <laughs> You're going to get a whole lot of technicals for having eight guys on the floor. I, I got, and also, I got to add some guy left. And uh, there's about six other guys, but uh, we'll work all the details out. Okay, you, you need a bench. Just need the facts and yeah, the details. <laughs> we saw. Fuzzy. I, I saw a little of Jays at halftime. He had a starting five, and I think he had six guys on the bench. You can go left. <laughs> So many great players yeah. in this league. It's hard to pick five. So many guys deserving to be all ACC and start hard of slots. Mason, what a look. Watson. And a one-handed <laughs> rebound by Baxter. He took Mathis with one hand and pushed him away <laughs> and grabbed the ball the other. Oh! But you know, it's about three times tonight using a big guy as a passer up in the high post. It's misfired. Let's watch this play. Look at Dixon, Dixon here. He's he's gonna watch how active he is. Nice back pick by Holden. Whoops. Oh man, he's on that. Yeah. He's wide open if he just throws a good pair. Outstanding without the ball. Even better with it, obviously. Jennifer with oh, Tan. Hugh Jennifer comes in. Excellent move. Goes all the way to the basket. Doesn't get any defense. Why not go? All Virginia to start the second half. Timeout, Maryland. ESPN and ESPN2, home of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. Oh, Joy, you spied someone breathtaking. What do you think? Breath. Mine? Bad? Teeth? Not white. So, he'll just admire me. From afar. Get back. Get new Crest Whitening Plus Scope. The one and only with Crest Whitening Power and a big blast of scope. For a bright white smile, clean, fresh breath. Now all you need is something brilliant to say. Get new Crest Whitening Plus Scope. Open up and smile. NFL, you have one goal, the dance that everybody wants to be at. You have to understand, as a kid, this is what I always wanted to do. That Super Bowl trophy, you got to go out there and you got to take it. It's what we've been talking about. It's what we've been working for. I want to win one. We're going to do the Super Bowl. We are going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> you get that swagger about yourself. You'll be remembered as a champion to stand on top. And when it's all said and done, that's really what it's about. question is, is Steve Blake, do you want to get this close up on Keith Jennifer? He is so fast, and I know Blake plays Jason Williams great, but this young man, look at this. Their head up, look at that space. There's not enough space, I don't think. He's got to give him some more. This young man is quicker than a hiccup. He goes right by him, doesn't stop, has got him on his hip, goes all the way to the basket. You either got to focus and get in front of him and dig and make him work with that basketball or get up off of him, give him the space, and let him leisurely bring it up. First points of the night for Jennifer as the freshman class continues to shine for Pete Gillen here tonight. It's 
swing, post up Baxter. Nice pass. Here comes the help from Williams. Baxter doesn't even feel it, but a triple team helps take the ball away. And Jennifer, he's making some good decisions, isn't he? I'm not sure they're going to get him out of this starting lineup. He I like what he's doing. Yeah. He's taking the ball out of Mason's hand. It gives him a chance to do this. Offensive. He's at three. Looks like that is the third foul on Roger Mason, Jr. Jennifer's doing a good job of taking care of the basketball. If he's not, you know, overreacting. A lot of times he's so fast and plays so quickly, he'll make mistakes. You know, just in the, the act of playing well. And he's, he's been real solid, take care of the ball, not overshooting or overpassing or overrunning anyone. Just became a starter when Adam Hall went out with the injury, and they juggled the lineup a little bit. And now Mathis picks up the foul, trying to put the body on Taj Holden. Look at Jennifer pushing the ball, pushing the ball. Blake gets out, gets back in front of him, very smart. He pulls it right back out, slows down the temp tempo, gets a little rhythm, sets up the offense. That's 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 a veteran ball player. Dixon from the corner. And Mouton with his seventh offensive rebound of this game. He's so active. So, I mean, just one of those guys you have to have if you're going to win big ball games. He's holding a good position with Mason on him, and he makes him pay. Holden really hasn't been as active tonight as he usually is. Like I say, it's a little bit lame. He's usually pretty explosive around the basket, makes a couple threes to shoot the ball. His first points, Maryland's first points of the half, and their first bench points of the game. Wow. Very uncharacteristically of Maryland team right now. Jennifer, a little bit too much there. Mouton, can Dixon run it down? Wow, how did he keep his feet? That was a heck of a move. He slipped the floor. There's a little damp down there, and he still made the shot. So a little spurt here for Maryland to get back within three. See if Virginia can answer. Nice pick and roll high with Williams. Should be wide open. Whoops. There he is. Yep. Floater from the baseline. No. Holden has it. Looks ahead to Blake. Mouton's with him. So's Baxter. And before the shot, there's a foul on the floor. Steve Blake does a good job getting in the middle of the floor, creating avenues to pass that basketball. Now, Pete Gillen is calling a timeout. There would have been the under-16 timeout already, so I'm not sure which timeout this is. We'll have to wait and see. Juan Dixon here. He's, he sees the basketball, sees the basketball. He's like a wide receiver. Watch his foot slip. I mean, look at that body control. That's excellent. He could be playing a, playing football somewhere as a wide receiver with that kind of body control. You know, when, when he committed to Maryland, apparently the, the runner-up school, the second school he considered was Providence, huh. whose head coach at the time was Pete Gillen. Yeah. And yeah. Pete Gillen really went after him. Dixon was not that highly recruited, but he's come down to the ACC and become really one of the best players that this Maryland program has ever seen. Virginia leading by three. for sirloin steak skillets like our bold pepper steak or smothered steak with fresh mushrooms onions and mozzarella only at applebee's how to speak australian laundromat cheers mate beer Boston's australian for beer there's a time when this thing was sweet. I'm not sure when exactly. But now this relic is, um, shall we say, past its prime, sort of like your old computer. Right now, you can upgrade to America's favorite PC, a complete Dell system with an Intel Pentium 4 processor for just $7.99. Dig it. Oh, you're the more mobile type, not a couch potato. You can get a Dell notebook with an Intel Pentium 3 processor for $11.49. Check this out, right now. You'll pay nothing for 90 days. Getting a Dell is so easy. All you gotta do is call or go online, and the Dell folks will help you build the computer that's right for you. Yep, a Dell desktop for $7.99 or a notebook for $11.49. Well, don't just sit there. At these prices, you can get a Dell with what you find right here. Dude, you're getting a Dell. Easy to buy, easy to own, easy as Dell. 
Indiana's opening up an old oaken bucket size can of whooping on Purdue. Tom Coverdell, the steal, going to the cup, can't get it to go, but Kyle Hornsby finds the range. 17 point game. Hoosiers up halfway through the second time. Well, Reese, that's two big efforts in a week for the Hoosiers. Remember uh, the beating they put on Illinois. Mm -hmm. Boy, they took it home. Mark Davis has got those guys playing some excellent basketball. I know Reese is proud. Old Alabama graduate there, both <laughs> those guys. Well, what we were told is there was not a timeout charge to Virginia. That was the media timeout. That was what the call was before another official noticed Pete Gillen trying to call a timeout. I'll leave that up to them. <laughs> all, all parts of that. Blake doesn't look for his shot all that often, but he knocks down a three to tie the game. Blake with seven. He definitely uh, has the X factor capability. Yeah. Struggled because of the fouls, but he's valuable. Dan Shulman and Brad Doherty with you here at University Hall. An ACC battle between Maryland and Virginia all tied up. That's the first three of the night for the Terps. Maryland led by as many as nine in the first half. Virginia responded, and Mason responds right there. Two-point lead for the Cavs. Looks like it's going to be a back and forth. You know, we, we had hoped. Every now and again, you do a game, and you say, boy, this one's going to be special. And we had hoped this would be the one, and so far it has been. Yes, sir. Keith Jennifer on the offensive end. Virginia just broke down Steve Blake with a nice pass. Offensive on Baxter. Looked like Lonnie had a lot of people hanging off his arms there. He go so far, but they were hanging on him. And well, he may have got a foul before the uh, charge. Number two on Baxter. Don't forget there's another game coming your way. Jason Williams and number one Duke on ESPN. Less than an hour from now as they take on North Carolina at Chapel Hill. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific tonight on ESPN. It's all part of Rivalry Week. For more, log on to ESPN.com. I'm going to be a big one. Got to get ready. I got to tell my wife, Heidi, to get my old Carolina Blue cardigan out. <laughs> get, put the kids in bed. I'll be home. Get the popcorn ready. I'm coming. I got to get this big tar here in front of a TV as soon as this one's over. I know that. <laughs> here comes Mason. Oh, Spins. Oops. Now you got to stop that. A tie up, and the uh, arrow's going to send it back over to Maryland once it gets pinned in between the backboard and the rim. Boy, oh, Roger Mason's been, if he could have just gotten his control, look at him. I mean, that's just confidence. He knows that's good. He's already running away. He's calling for the ball. That's a good fundamental sound basketball. Going in, using the glass. Miller, a hoop, nice layup. Once again, from the outside, three pointer. He's been huge tonight. If he could have got his feet under him, on that last play, he could have gathered himself without maybe got the foul. And you're right. As good as he is when he plays the point, with Jennifer in there and he's able to move off the ball, he's even better. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't have the responsibility of trying to get everybody else's game off. He can get his own on. So he's, he's a heck of a player. Chris Williams picks up the foul. That's his third. So Watson. Uh, it goes on Mathis. Check that. So Watson with three. Mason with three. And on Mathis, that's two. Dixon to Mouton. He's had the hot hand all night long. Byron to Mouton now with 18. I, I think I might put Mouton on all ACC. <laughs> if I got five yet, I think I'd take him as well. Averaging 10, 18 already here tonight. Tied up again. Oh, he's had a big day. Good pass. Williams, good hesitation. Almost finished it. Holden commits the foul. It's a good foul, but the problem is the pass was too easy to begin with. I mean, Holden does the right thing when I let him get the shot off. But he just merely stepped into the lane on a little duck in and caught the ball right in front of the goal. It's too easy. This Maryland team's too good to allow these passes and these type of things to take place offensively for Virginia. They're just going down doing what they want to do. This game ends the first half of the ACC schedule. After this game, both of these teams will play all of the other teams once. If Maryland can get this one and go to 7-1 and one in the conference, in the second half, Duke comes to them. North Carolina State comes to them. Virginia comes to them. And Wake Forest comes to them. So they've played, theoretically, their tougher games on the road. And they've got some big-time home games coming up. Yeah, this is a tough atmosphere to come in and participate in. Don't get me wrong, but I just have a lot of regard for this Maryland basketball team, one of the top two or three teams in the country. I expect miracles out of them a lot of night. Good job by Watson in traffic to pick up the miss by Wilcox. Let's give Virginia their credit. They're playing some good basketball here. Yep. Ten and one here. They're tough to beat. Harper, great hesitation. Good job by Harper. 
Boy, he's another guy with a lot of speed. Jermaine Harper just went right by his defender. Nice pump fake, got everybody. He looked at everybody jump. Great foul contact. Through the next few games for Maryland, they've got State, then at Carolina. You can see him on ESPN2 against Georgia Tech. Duke at Maryland a couple of weeks from now. But again, NC State, Duke, Virginia, wait. All go to full field house. Maryland and Duke right now share top spot of the ACC at 6-1. and one. Of course, Duke losing to Florida State, Maryland losing to Duke. NC State and Wake are both 5-3. and three. Virginia is 4-3. and three. I done figured it out. I think, let's see. All right, Florida State beat Duke. Mm -hmm. Western Carolina University beat Florida State. <laughs> Montreat Anderson College up in Black Mountain, North Carolina, beat Western Carolina. So right. they're number one in the country. Right, so your hometown there team. There you go. <laughs> Got to take care of the hometown guys, man. Got to take care of those guys. You know, there's, there's a method to your madness. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Gardner at Montreat Anderson College and having a great year. This guy's doing a good job up there in Black Mountain. Dixon trying to get on track. Big guy can shoot it. Woo, look good. Look good. Rebound Elton Brown. What a force he was off the bench in the first half. Yes, he was. He can get in this game and contribute the second half the way he did the first. He can push. He can be the difference. For most of the night, Virginia's played with, on average, two freshmen on the floor. But they sure haven't looked like it. No, you're exactly right. These freshmen uh, really stepped up and did a great job. That's a nice shot by Watson. Something you don't expect out of him. 13, 14 foot shot in the corner. Stepping up. Ten points, six rebounds for Travis Watson. 30-second timeout, Maryland, with Virginia's lead back up to five. Well, let's set the Virginia schedule coming up right now. The second half of their conference play is going to be more difficult. Plus, they're going out of conference to take on Missouri Sunday 2 Eastern on ABC. And then you can see them also next week at NC State over on ESPN. Too. So they, they've got some tough games coming. Oh, but. yeah. Oh, yeah. Every night in this league, it's tough. Yep. Every night. Tomorrow night at 9 on ESPN, the NHL will showcase its hottest young players during the inaugural NHL Young Stars game. Highlighting NHL players ages 25 and under, and then at 10, the NHL's best show off their skating, shooting, goaltending, and more in the Dodge NHL Super Skills Competition. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Back here in Charlottesville, a five-point lead for the Cavaliers. Holden backing down Watson. Got his own miss, and who's going to get it? Great hustle by Holden. He made a heck of a move stepping in, power stepping to the middle of the lane. Shot just a little short. Looked like he's, like I say, looked like he's limping or something's not quite right with him, but showed a lot of activity, a lot of hustle, getting a second, second chance opportunity. Brad, the foul on Chris Williams. So it's three on Williams, three on Travis Watson, three on Roger Mason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hate to see a, a good effort go by the wayside because you know, they're not going to be able to participate because of foul trouble. That's why I just hate that. The referee's fault. <laughs> right now, all three of them are on the floor. Look about the free throw shooting in this game? Maryland is a perfect 15 for 15, and Virginia, not bad, 14 for 16. Oh, excellent. And I'm just kidding about the officials. Frank Scagliata, Duke Edsel, Ed Corbett. These guys do a wonderful job, the toughest job in the world. Big guy from the corner, not this time for Brown. We well, took a good look at it, I tell you. I don't know if I'm, I'm not displeased if I'm coaching that team. That's a good look for him. Holden. Woo! Boy, Taj Holden is not really known for being a guy who's going to score that much on the inside, even though he's a big guy. But he's gone down there with a purpose tonight. I mean, that was a catch and shoot. Watch his pass. He's off the ground, turning. He was ready to catch the ball and score. You make your mind up. You have the talent, the skills. Nice pass. He's in the lane. Good deep post up. Gets a little body right there. Good job, big fella. Seven points on the night for Holden. All of them coming here in the second half. And now he'll get a well-deserved rest. And Lonnie Baxter is going to come back in there. The numbers we were just referring to. Unbelievable free throw shooting tonight. It's good to see that. You see so many games throughout the years. The kids study is constant. It's free throw. It's free throw. It's good to see somebody who makes a free throw. A quick 5-0 run for the Terps to get him back into a tie. Swing that basketball. Swing the basketball. And reaching in, is it Blake or Dixon? We're going to call on Dixon. Yeah. Good help by Dixon. Trying to slap the ball out of there, but he had the, he had the gap closed. Should have stayed there. Williams had left his feet. He was in trouble. That is Juan Dixon's specialty. 
Reaching in there, slapping the ball away. Leads the conference in steals. Wow. They just continue, Virginia, to find a way to get ahead. Whether it be going to the free throw line or Elton Brown hitting a big shot, whatever. Maryland did not get the lead to create any distance between them. This the 156th meeting between Maryland and Virginia for the first time they've ever met when both of them were ranked in the top five. Baxter with a jump hook. Boy, he got so deep. He's so strong. That jump hook is awesome. What a catch underneath by Williams, and he draws the foul. Once again, Chris Williams goes to the foul line. Watch Lonnie Baxter catch his basketball. Look how deep he is on that lane. Elton Brown, you got to step to that right hand when he turns that way. That's the only way you can have any chance of slowing that down. He turns those big shoulders right there. That's it. There to there. That's what he turns. When he turns that, it creates that three feet of space that enables the guy to get to the basketball. Lonnie Baxter now into double figures. Williams at the line, and he's been there often tonight. He shot 12 for Start talking about the free throws. Williams misses a couple. It's uh, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Nicholas, Luton, no, and a good rebound for Watson. Again, they, they, they find a way to score. It seems like every time. Good pass. Jason Clark from Roger Man. Mason Jr. Well, I tell you, every time they come back and respond. Well, I tell you, Gary Williams is not happy with his troops giving up that easy a play. I just love how Pete Gillen has worked these freshmen in with the upperclassmen, too. They're, they're one big unit. That's right. That's right. Getting the seasoning for these young guys, getting their feet wet, the experience to know how to react and respond to this pressure situation. Tough runner for Steve Blake. Now they got to get back. But it's defense. That's what's been killing them. They haven't been able to get back in transition. Tied again. Mason drives hard to the hoop and draws the foul. Lonnie Baxter. Mason, we've seen the outside shooting. I mean, look at this guy. Look at the focus in his eyes. Look at his eyes. Look at him looking. He's looking. He says, all right, I saw the guy right here. I saw Clark right in the middle. Nice pass. Boy, what a finish. He saw Clark before he made the move. He initially adjusted his eyes, saw him in the first went, went around the corner, knew he was going to be there. Well, here's how good this league is that Roger Mason Jr., and he's having an outstanding season, didn't make your top five. Didn't make Jay Billis's no, top no, five. No, he, he makes five. Did he make squeezed onto yours? Yeah, he's on my top five. Now, Jay had him in the honorable mention list. Here's one guy everybody can agree on. And one guy Maryland's going to need to get going in the last ten and a half. If they're going to come back and beat Virginia, it's the Cavs leading the Terps by two. Hey, Boitano, LT, check it out. A dollar. So what can you get for a buck these days? A phone call? Your autograph? Whoa, guys, wait. For just 99 cents, you can get great food. Like my new Big Cheeseburger. A big patty with two kinds of melting cheese for just 99 cents. Sal cow. <laughs> your daddy. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? <laughs> Big Daddy! Big Daddy Sports Lounge is the family-friendly place for fun. Play some games. Place your bets. Catch NFL ticket on Sundays plus all the ASU games. And taste Big Daddy's unbelievable edibles. Juicy and delicious burgers. Everything's fresh and homemade. Big Daddy's my daddy. Big Daddy's at 7th Street and Dunlap. The fun place for families. Run to March is on. Get it all on ESPN Full Court. It's maximum college basketball with upcoming key conference tourney action and women's NCAA tournament games. Oh my goodness. ESPN Full Court only on pay-per-view. To order, call your local cable company, DirecTV, or Dish Network. Coach Izzo and College Hoops Tonight's Chris Fowler firmly remind know-it-all Paul to watch College Hoops Tonight and actually know it all when it comes to his team. Team! That's right, little fella. Remember, to know is to love.
Chris Davis with you in the studio. St. Joseph still unbeaten in A-10 play, taking on Rhode Island. Rhodey missing, and St. Joe's finding Marvin O'Connor running, averaging over 19 points per game and one. Hawks up by a dozen at the break. Indiana continuing to hang on to its lead over Purdue. They're getting deep in that game, and now Brad. Brad, you did not put Roger Mason Jr. on your all-ACC first team. I was listening. Oh, I, did. I thought I did. <laughs> See, that's what I thought, too, Reese, and then, you know what? Brad kind of owned up to it during the break, so thanks for catching him there. He's... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, next, yeah. next time... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on my... Yeah, he's, he's got to be on my... Come to, the, said... come to the breakfast meeting, and we'll iron all this up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got Virginia again coming up on ABC Sunday afternoon at 2 Eastern as the Cavs travel to Columbia to take on Kareem Rush at Missouri. Some of you will see DePaul and UNLV Sunday live at 2 Eastern on ABC. See if Maryland can take advantage of the timeout. They went back. Coach Williams got on all these guys about playing hard. Nice move down low, big fella. Ryan Randall in off the bench, a junior from Allegheny Junior College, the same JC that produced Steve Francis for a year for Maryland. Randall's been coming in and getting some significant minutes. He's, he's done extremely well. Chris Williams. Boy, how did they get through Wilcox? Now Watson again splits the D and banks it home. He's find a way. They just find a way, Dan. I keep saying it. Last two years, Maryland's come here as a highly ranked team and lost. And Virginia's had the reputation the last couple of years, Brad, of being a much different team, a much better team here at home than they are on the road or on a neutral court. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to that. 10 and 1 at home. Last year, 14 and 1 at home, 6 and 8 on the road or in neutral court games. They just feel the, the competition. They, they get after it, they can play hard. Roger Mason makes the. Nice pass down. Block shot attempt, not good. Look at this. These guys just keep playing, keep hustling. Watson, one, two. Gets the basketball, goes up. I'll tell you, that's just relentless effort on the backboard. That's what went ball. Now well, we could tell from the students how big this game was. And, and for both of these teams, you look at hustle stats like steals and offensive rebounds and block shots, and there have been plenty of those. Hundreds and hundreds of these kids pitched tents more than a week ago and sat there taking turns for one another, wristbands in effect, that whole thing, so everybody knew where their place in line was. They let them in about an hour and 45 minutes before the game, everybody wearing their Topple the Turtles t-shirts in orange here, and it's a great environment here at University Hall, and it has been an even better basketball game tonight. Well, it really has. I mean, it's, it's turned out to be a well of a game. I thought Maryland would come in with a little swagger and really go take it to Virginia because of the past couple of seasons, but boy, Virginia has really came out Baxter sheds Watson and ties the game. He sure did. He held his position, turned the, his big body, just sloughed him right off, drop step dunk. Seems like every minute or so we've got a tie. Well, now Maryland will need a three to tie it up after Mason knocks down another one. Right back at you once again. Roger Mason, four threes, 22 points. I still think you go right back down inside the, the Baxter, get that power play down low. You keep beating that ball inside. Nice move. Wow, Taj Holden really making things happen down low. That's a smart game plan. Take advantage of your big guys. Get something that you know is going to work. And they come back down and hopefully you outlast them on the three. Holden with nine. All of them coming in the second half. Maryland back within one. One thing about these teams, they both have so many different guys they could go to inside, outside. And we're seeing that every time down the floor. Roger Mason has really gotten on fire. The touch is coming to him. Watch him shoot this basketball. He knows this shot's going down. Look at it. Look at him fall back. He's like, oh, yeah, that's nothing but Nala. I'm not following that shot. Unless I'm taking the ball out of bounds for them. Mason's been huge. And even bigger development, perhaps, that last foul on Lonnie Baxter, his fourth. Mm. And he has gone to the bench with 8.27 to play. That's huge. Look at Watson run down his own miss. He almost airmailed it over his own yeah. bench. <laughs> make a mistake after you just make a great play like that. Mason. Where to go? Get the ball out top. Somebody got to help him. Wow, oh, boy. Get your hands up and get that basketball. Get your hands up. Shot clock at 15. Ball way off. There's so much time yeah. on the shot clock. What's the hurry? Yeah, they had 16 seconds on the clock. 
There's the trouble spot. Four fouls on Lonnie Baxter. So Gary Williams is going to have to get some big minutes from the likes of Holden, Wilcox, and Randall the rest of the way. Virginia with Pete Gillen saying, get up on your feet. Cavs lead by one. For Valentine's Day, Zales has exclusive diamond heart pendants, like this half carat for just $99, or this one and a half carat for just $199. There is romance in here at zalesandzales.com. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Go! Go! No, no. Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue. Man, that dude's awesome. Get Selsun Power. Tell me something good. When you come to Jackson Hewitt for your taxes, you'll get a super fast refund. In fact, our typical refund is over $400 more than the average IRS refund. Call Jackson Hewitt now, 1-800-234-1040. Now get the Wall Street Journal delivered for eight weeks at just 38 cents a day, a 50% savings. Call 800-454-6500. That's 800-454-6500 for the Wall Street Journal. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Sales, the Diamond Store. One point lead for Virginia over Maryland, 753 to play here in Charlottesville. Way back when during Sports Center, we talked about the Mason Dixon line, comparing Roger Mason Jr. and Juan Dixon, both outstanding players. But tonight, it's been Mason who's actually had the better game. He has been extremely confident, taking big shots, taking advantage of the opportunities given to him. He's played a heck of a basketball game. And Juan Dixon, he's not having a Juan Dixon like night. I tell you, he's capable of putting up some huge numbers. And it's just not happening. Funny thing about Mason, he didn't score for the first nine minutes and 45 seconds tonight, and he's still got 22. In terms of the big guys, Travis Watson, 12 points, 10 rebounds. Lonnie Baxter, 12 points, 9 rebounds. So that's a soft, except Baxter's on the bench with four fouls, and that's why Ryan Randall's in the game, and he banks one home. He's very good down low, man. He catches that basketball like that. He has a nose for the basket, went up strong, used the glass, soft touch. They got some really talented post players. Yep. They bring Holden off the bench, bring Randall off the bench, bring Nicholas off the bench. And even though in the first half they didn't get much from their bench, it's still one of the, the better groups in this league. And Baxter just having to sit and watch right now with four fouls. Don't forget, top of the hour on ESPN, number one Duke led by Jason Williams, Mike Dunleavy, Carlos Cruiser, and others. Travel to Chapel Hill, not much of a travel. About eight miles down the road to take on the Tar Heels. All part of Rivalry Week on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. What has to happen for Carolina to get the game? Well, it's going to be difficult. I think they're going to have to handle Duke's pressure. Their pressure is overwhelming in the backcourt. They just create so many turnover opportunities. If North Carolina can get the ball up the court, shoot it success successfully on the out shots, get a few shots, get a few breaks. Uh, it's going to take a lot. Duke's a heck of a basketball club this year. It's going to be tough to beat them. Beautiful block by Clark who is fourth in the ACC in blocks, even though he only pass. plays 12 minutes a game. Oh, good pass. Jennifer makes an excellent play. Throws the pass across his body over to watch a three-point play. What a decision by that young man, Keith Jennifer. Excellent decision. I'll tell you, he's mature. He goes, look at him. He's going away from the basket. He recognizes where Watson's at. Boy, look at that. Throws him the basketball, gives him one big step to the basket, and there's the foul. Oh, man, that is a great setup. You love to play with guys like that. Well, when you look at a guy like Jennifer, even in a loss against Duke on Sunday, in 33 minutes, he did not commit a single turnover. You know you've got yourself something. That's incredible. At the speed he plays, turnovers are almost, you know, part of that. He really takes care of the ball. Gary Williams may be feeling he's got a... Push some buttons right now. Brings Lonnie Baxter back into the game with four fouls and seven minutes to play. Really careful. You're wondering if Lonnie can be as effective as he normally is, but he's a bull in the counter shot. No, no sir! No sir! Chris Williams with an enormous block oh, on Byron Mucha. Not you haul, baby! Uh-uh! Take that with you! What a great job by Chris Williams coming from the weak side. Look at his pass. Good job. Good defense. Good help. 
everybody giving an A effort for Virginia tonight. They're getting contributions from every player Pete Gillen's put on the floor. Mason spins. Tough one. This is rebound. That's Williams. That rebound. Yeah. And they kicked it back out. Now Jennifer says, let's start all over, guys. Oh, Jennifer. Oh, boy. Trying to shake Dixon. Oh, oh look at this. Oh, oh my. Oh, look. Oh, a little high seat. Another great decision by that young man. Now you see it, now you don't. Man, when well, he's playing a well of a game. Back to a four-point lead, and Gary Williams needs another timeout. See him catch the basketball, a little fake. Good job. You know, I remember seeing an interview Pete Gillen gave in November. He said, Jennifer might not help us in November, but by January, watch out. Oh, yeah, he's <laughs> developing. And we got a little bit of a disagreement going on right here on the basketball court. Like uh, Jennifer stayed in their huddle and had something to say. They're getting fired up. Gary Williams didn't take umbrage to whatever was said, and now we've got a, a discussion going on here. Well, you talk about two guys who just give all their blood, sweat, and tears to their programs, and Gary Williams and Pete Gillen. Yeah, yeah. Frank Scagliata in the middle of it saying, all right, guys, let's, let's calm this down. Officials seem to have placated the coaches to a certain extent as each coach now goes back to his huddle. Well, Pete Gillen has done for Virginia what Gary Williams did for Maryland a few years earlier. Took him from middle of the road to contender to national contender, and now Virginia headed on the same path. And let's see if we can find out. Timeout called. Watch this young man right here. He just stays there. Gary Williams with some words for Jennifer, and then Watson gets in there to stand up for his teammate. Yeah, it's rivalry week, isn't it? Boy, they're getting after it. Getting after it. That's what you want to see. The troops are rallying, man. <laughs> Jennifer says, I'm not a young man. I'm not a freshman. I'll get that yellow stripe off. I'm not a rookie. I'm He's, bringing it. He sure hasn't played like one here tonight. What a steal for Clark. Another freshman. They score here. This place will go nuts. Maryland's sitting back in the zone right now. You got number five, Virginia, leading number three, Maryland, by four in a game that's been back and forth all night long. Big respect game right now for... Oh, no, he ain't gonna make it. Oh, oh, look at the rebound! Clark again, and it's out of bounds to Maryland. It just grazed the uniform of Chris Williams, I believe, on the way out of bounds. What Williams didn't realize is that Clark was the one in control of the basketball and the rebound. And now Pete Gillen wants a timeout. What a pace, what intensity here in this building tonight. And it got taken up to another level on the last time out when Gary Williams and Keith Jennifer got in each other's face. See a little elbow there, and you see Gary and uh, Jennifer says something. And Jimmy Patsos in there telling Jennifer to get out of the Maryland huddle, and then Watson stands up for Jennifer. Duke Hetzel trying to control a little... Uh, Create a little harmony here. That's Walt Fuller, one of the assistants for Virginia, as he's being ushered back. And, and Walt's, Walt's coming over and saying, hey, guys, uh, there's a great Italian restaurant right downtown. <laughs> Take all you guys out after the game. Yeah. They'll all be friends in about a half an hour, but uh, for the meantime, they're not. Don't forget, there's another ACC rivalry week game coming your way. Top of the hour over on ESPN, number one Duke against Carolina. We have had an incredible 34 and a half minutes of basketball here tonight. Number three, Maryland. Number five, Virginia. Boy, it's been an unbelievable basketball game. Virginia's just done a great job. Good block. Clark again. Baxter corrals the loose ball. Good block by Clark. 
Bonnie Baxter staying at home under the board, doing what he's supposed to do, picking up the garbage, putting it home. Double-double tonight for Lonnie Baxter, 14 points, 10 rebounds, playing with four fouls. Mason baseline, pull up, draws the foul. Oh, he's so quick. I mean, he gets two inches, he's gone. Two inches, he's gone. See Blake drive, Jennifer comes across, blocked by Clark, Lonnie Baxter, nice hustle. Good hustle. Meanwhile, the other end, the foul goes on Taj Holden, his fourth. So Baxter's got four. And Holden's got four. Now they do have Wilcox and they do have Randall. And here comes Wilcox right now. Holden out. Baxter's going to stay in this game with four fouls. Virginia's got four players with three, but Virginia had foul trouble ten minutes ago. They yeah. nothing's gotten worse for them. No, they played with it. They played smart basketball, taking you know their opportunities, made the most of them, just like this right here, the free throw. Yeah. Well, Mason's 90% on the season. Baxter on the floor with four fouls. Came in at about the seven-minute mark. Maryland sensing this one might get away from them unless they keep all their big guys on the floor right now. Let's see what happens this possession. I would assume you're going down low to Baxter. Dixon's really been unable to get on track by his standards offensively. They're surrounding him every time he touches the ball. He's struggling against Duke, and now uh, I saw what happened that ball game. He's so much blue. Tough one for Blake, and he'll shoot a couple. Looks like Williams gets called for the foul. And Dixon's hot. This team just, just rolls. Can't do much with him at all. But you got to give the guy a lot of credit. I mean, he's got two or three guys guarding him. You see Mason Jr. shadowing him there. He drives the basket there, everybody's got three guys. Look at that. One, two, three. I'm telling you, they're all coming to him, so uh, he's got a tough, tough row to hold. So, so maybe then Blake's the guy who's going to have to step up. If Dixon can't get open, then Steve Blake going to have to look for his offense a little more. Knocks down a couple, and how about the Terps from the line tonight? 18 for 18. Outstanding. Close. Yeah, Blake guest from the corner. Oh, you know who? Roger Mason. You are the man. Boy, it's a big shot. A season high 27 points for Roger Mason Jr. He just keeps making big shot after big shot. Like Xavier didn't shoot for the first almost 10 minutes of the ball game. Knocked away by Clark. He's been huge the last few minutes at the defensive end. Mason again. You're exactly right. Right now, it just looks like a case of who wants it more. Exactly right. These kids are wanting it so bad. They know this is their chance. This is their opportunity to prove that they're the fifth-ranked team in the country. And all this know-it-alls at College Hoop tonight <laughs> and, and question that, they're showing us right now why Virginia's number five. And it's wide open. He's going to get it. Oh, what a move. What a move. protecting their basket wow. and attacking the other basket. Travis Watson, of those 10 rebounds, Brad, eight of them are at the offensive end. Ooh, man. Dixon with a rebound. Still a lot of time if Maryland can get hot. That's a big if. If they can get Juan Dixon off a couple of deep screens, maybe give him a chance to turn a corner and shoot the basketball, but other than that, Dixon going hard to the hole. He's just four for 12 shooting the ball today. He's going to try to go inside and maybe get a hack, get it done from the line. Good move by Dixon. Turned the corner hard. Got a hard foul. Clark comes over and stops the basketball. Now, Jason Clark in the first half played four minutes, had nothing but zeros across his ledger, but in the second half, blocks. Steals, rebounds. He's been terrific. Great asset tonight in this ball club. Come in and give him big minutes. 
improving his odds to get more playing time. They're hanging in at the line. 20 for 20 from the strike tonight, but it's Virginia by seven. Standing ovation from a capacity crowd here at University Hall in Charlottesville. In Virginia, take it home. <laughs> Boy, are we changing history here. <laughs> well, Maryland and Duke share the lead in the ACC right now, each at 6-1. and one. Foul trouble for Maryland. Baxter, who's been playing for a few minutes with his fourth foul. Virginia's okay. Nobody's got four right now. Three minutes to go. Virginia with the ball and a seven-point lead. They've been great from three. They've taken care of the basketball. Until now, Wilcox with the steal. Get out of his way. Oh, here comes the pressure. Timeout, Virginia. Wow. That was quick. Chris Williams got accosted trying to get the ball across half court. You see right there. Good defense, though. Excellent defense. This young man is a high riser. Man. Wow. <laughs> Just six for Wilcox, though. Hasn't gotten a lot of minutes in the second half. Holden's been getting more of the minutes, but Maryland's now back within five. And the way this game has been played, Brad. 251 is an eternity. Oh, it's forever in this basketball game. So, you know, by all means, Maryland's not done. They're right there. And I expect a huge push from them. Coming up next year on ESPN2, the season presented by Circuit City. The Arizona Wildcat football team granted ESPN cameras access to all activities on and off the field. See how players and coaches react to a disappointing season in the desert in part two of the season. And over on ESPN, of course, number one Duke taking on Carolina at the Dean Dome, just a few minutes away. A big finish just a few minutes away here as Maryland almost forces another turnover. That numbers. Williams and a rock in the hole. Numbers and a bucket. Man, how did he get all the way to the bucket and make the shot? I mean, you can't, you can't give that up. Here comes the trap, the triple team. Nicholas doesn't look, he needs to grab that basketball. Mason Jr. loses it. Travis Watson. Man, that's good strength. I didn't realize Chris Williams had that kind of strength. He just shielded Wilcox. I mean, that was incredible to get that shot off. Most oh, of his damage coming from the line tonight. Done a good job there. That foul on Wilcox is third. He goes out. Miss that one, though. Maryland, we have them out of timeouts right now. So they're going to have to make this up as they go. Look at the free throw score. Terps perfect. Nicholas. Huge. Wow. Boy, was he deep. He had all that. He knew he was making that shot. Then he turned the corner. He was gone. He came into the program with the reputation of being just a shooter. He's become more than that, but he's still a good shooter. He makes those kind of shots. He can be just a shooter. <laughs> And Jennifer going to use a little clock. Oh, well, not quick. that much. Yeah, he man. gave one away a little bit early. That's the first bad decision yeah. I've seen that young man make this season. Come Two. back down here and get something else out of it, though. Make up for it. Two minutes to go. Maryland with the ball down four. Pass back to Holden, who can shoot this basketball. How about Blake on the bench at crunch time right now? When's the last time Maryland was in this kind of a game and Steve Blake was sitting on the bench? Well, if I'm on that Maryland basketball team, I surely want Blake on that floor handling that ball. That's my security, knowing he's going to make good decisions. But, hey, they've done a good job. Nicholas has come in and hit some big buckets. Nixon can handle the basketball. Timeout taken by Virginia. Steve Blake, even if he's not in the game, trying to give out some advice to those who are. Steve Blake's sitting there, and Gary comes down and says, all right, come on, get in, come on, get in. He says, he's looking at it, he says, nah, nah, sit down, sit down. Oh. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> that hurts. Old psych move. Yeah. We're talking about one of the best point guards in the country, especially at getting his teammates involved offensively, but he's really been unable to do that here tonight that last foul went against Keith Jennifer his fourth he becomes the first Virginia player with four Baxter and Holden have been shuttling in and out of the game with four for several minutes well, Blake's not in the ball game. Well, that is all I mean I, maybe they're going to the, after this time out but, but I mean he, he's the primary he's the primary guy I want him to keep him in the ball game. didn't see any kind of an injury and it certainly hasn't been Blake's 
best night. Nicholas has done some nice things in his place in the last couple of minutes. He's had a tough time standing in front of Jennifer. Though. Yeah. What does this game mean? Well, Maryland's trying to stay right at the top of the ACC. They're tied with Duke at 6-1, and one, and Virginia's trying to prove they belong closer to the top of the ACC. A Virginia win over Maryland would really tighten things up in this conference. Oh, well, yeah, it'd be awesome. It'd be a lot of parity, right? You know, right in there, and that's what, the, that's what makes this conference so great. Any one of these guys can step up in tonight, have a huge night, and beat you. And we'll see what Carolina has in store for Duke. That game getting underway in just a couple of minutes over on ESPN. At the line, Byron Mouton, who had the huge first half, 16 points in the first half. Got all of that. That's just his third point in the second half, but he is nine for nine from the line, and the Terps continue to be perfect. What a story they've done at the line tonight. 22 for 22. Wow. Mason almost turned it over. Maryland's really stepped up the defensive intensity the last couple of minutes. Coming with a double team. Yeah, block on Nicholas, and here's the problem. You don't want to send Roger Mason to the line if you're Maryland because he's the best free throw shooter in the conference, maybe the best free throw shooter in the country. you got to get the ball out of his hands. Just jinx. <laughs> Just jinx. At 90%, I'll take my chances. Just ruined everything. He's got two. Just getting underway in Chapel Hill, even as we speak. Duke and Carolina over on ESPN. And Mike Patrick, Dick Vitale. Ooh. Big man. Yeah, when it left oh, his hand, I thought man. you were right. <laughs> oh, man. You jinxed the man. He used all the iron yes, to get he that did. Hand. Come on, Roger. There you go. Deep breath. Stroke. Oh, man. That was winning. All right, all right. 29 points tonight for Mason. One shy of his career high. I think he's going to break that. At the line, probably. Yeah. Dixon. Oh, they're playing him well. Yeah. They got bigger guys who can guard him. So it's Nicholas stepping up. <laughs> Man, he was deep. And that's the second shot in a two-minute span. With about 30 feet, he's drilled. Two late threes for Nicholas. His only baskets of the night. Maryland's back within one. Wow. That's incredible. What a game. This is a heck of a ball game. Harper in late right now for Virginia. Get a little pick right here for Roger Mason. Free him up, a little body movement with Clark. Oh, he splits a double team. Loader, no. Watson. Loose ball still. It goes to Maryland. Huge break. Watson on the backboard. Big. Been great if he could have got back up with that shot. Got it dug out of there. Let's see if Maryland can go down and capitalize. Ten-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Yeah, Neither exactly. starting point guard is in the game right now. It's Nicholas against Harper. It's Dixon with a money shot. Big move. Now, Virginia. They'll take their last timeout with 28.3 seconds to go to diagram one last shot. Wow. I mean, when you have a lot of talent, it just, it just rises. The cream just rises. Dixon had been just four for 12 before that shot, but the Terps wouldn't even be this close if it weren't for the contributions of Drew Nicholas. Boy, look at that. You knew that was good. I mean, just look at the rotation spot. Wow. He's becoming a Virginia killer. Last year in the game here, he was three for three. And in the game at Maryland, he was seven for eight. Wow. Virginia can't stop this guy. That quickly, it changed. But I'll tell you what. I like this Virginia ball club in this situation. You got 20, 28 seconds. Put that ball in Roger Mason's hands the way he's played tonight. I think he can make a big shot. Yeah. He's made him from outside. He's driven inside. He's done it from the line, and he's got the ball right now. Lots of help. Lots of help. Good pass. Williams, tough one off the glass. Oh, Rebound, Holden. Tough, tough, tough. Tough, tough, tough. Still 13.7 seconds to play. Taj Holden, a pretty good free throw shooter. You know he's excited. He's the first guy down the floor. Yeah, we have made a mistake of leaving his feet. Tried to balance himself in there and make that shot. Well, that's a tough shot. Got a lot of time. Why not get another swing and maybe get a little better shot? 
But hey, kids are trying. Yep. Not going to knock that. Everybody's working hard. They played a heck of a basketball game. Both of these teams have. This, if Maryland wins this game, is going to be the unbelievable story of this game, that they have not missed a single free throw all night long. Wow. That is wonderful. That's great to see. Shows that, you know, kids can work hard, work on your free throws, and be good free throws. Remember those bench points? None for Maryland yeah. in the first half. 21 in the second half. Woo. Nicholas and Holden. Randall in there as well. They need a three to block. tie. It's blocked. Nicholas with a big block. Brown from the corner. And it's Maryland ball with a second and a half to play. They had a decent look from the corner by Elton Brown, who hit a couple tonight. Elton Brown had a great look. I thought he made it. And a quick foul with 1.2 to play, but such an incredible effort Man. by Virginia. They led so much of the second half, but Maryland just wore them down. Tough shot. Look at Nicholas. Oh, great block. Brown has the shot. Oh, man, it was close. With 2.40 to play, it was Virginia 85, Maryland 78. Since then, the Terps have gone on a 12-2 run. Two huge threes, mammoth threes from Drew Nicholas and just money free throw shooting from everybody on the team. Boy, the free throw shooting has been outstanding. Oh, we keep it. Still. 23, 24 is pretty darn good. 24, 25, excuse me. Already airing off with the, the stats there. Uh, excellent. There's the one that matters. All they needed was one Boy, to make it a two possession game. That is incredible. I can't believe they come back again. Great job. Great game. The University of Maryland wins for the first time in three years here and sends this capacity proud home brokenhearted after Virginia led almost the entire second half and saw it slip away from them in the last two minutes. A 13-2 run by the Turks at the end to win 91-87. Coming up next, it's the season, Arizona football, part two. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college basketball on the internet. For Brad Doherty, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Maryland pulls it out of the end of beating Virginia 91-87. So long from Charlottesville.